Optical stylets became famous because of the retromolar approach to intubation. This enables intubation to patients with limited mouth opening via the oral route. In this video, we will discuss the different techniques in performing retromolar intubation. The retromolar approach has its pros and cons over other techniques. It can be used in patients with limited mouth opening. It also follows a shorter route towards the glottis. However, orientation is more challenging in this approach. The first step in doing a retromolar intubation is mastering the use of the optical stylet in a simpler approach, such as the midline approach. Once you've mastered these techniques, only then should you attempt to perform a retromolar approach. If you are performing this technique on a difficult patient, rule out other techniques such as awake flexible intubation via the nasal route. When using the von fields, follow the curvature of the teeth. So the concave part of the von field should be facing the teeth. Okay? So I will hold the mandible of the patient to close the teeth of the patient. So from the side, enter the retromolar space. So once you've entered the retromolar space, when the curvature of the vault pills has passed the teeth, you will be able to see the tonsillar pillar on the opposite side. Okay. Once you're at that level, you could twist the scope towards the glottis. So, if you're entering from the right side, you're going to rotate clockwise. So, if you enter from the left, rotate counterclockwise. From this point, you'll be able to see the glottis in front of you. Just in case you didn't see the glottis, um, use small movements in finding the uh, vocal cords. So, don't move forward if you don't know where you are. Okay? So, once you've located the, the vocal cords, enter the vocal cords, and then push down the ET tube. Okay? So, from here, you could see the marker of the ET tube and the vocal cords at the side of the marker. Okay, so, you know you're at the right level and you're sure that you're inside the trachea. Then, remove the bone fields the way you've entered. Okay. So, when using the CMAC VS, it's similar to using the bone fields. Again, follow the curvature of the teeth. So, the articulating part of the CMAC VS should be facing the patient. Okay, enter the side, and then in order to enter the retromolar space, press the lever partially until you've passed the teeth. So when you pass the teeth, uh, you could see the tonsillar pillar on the opposite side. And then twist the CMAC VS caudally so that you'll be facing the vocal cords. Okay, so maneuver it until you've entered the vocal cords and then release the lever before pushing down the ET tube. Okay, so here there's a little bit more resistance so that's why it's important to put a lot of lubricant on the scope and on the ET tube. Okay, When I was in residency, my professor in anesthesia taught me a technique in intubating a difficult airway blindly. This is called the ice pick maneuver. So what you do is hyperextend the neck of the patient, straighten the ET tube like an ice pick, insert it from the side, pointing towards the glottis. So 
here, you could approximate the, the position of the glottis while feeling for the air from the other end of the ET tube. Once you feel the air, you could push down so that you'll be entering the trachea. I've adopted this technique uh, using the CMAC VS. Using the CMAC VS, okay, hyperextend the neck of the patient, insert the, the VS from the side. So see, it's straight like an ice peak. So target the position of the glottis. Okay. See, from the side, it's almost there. So now, since you could articulate, you could just press the lever upwards since you've seen the arytenoids and then enter the vocal cords. Okay? So same process. Release the lever, insert the ET tube, then remove the CMAC VS. So, you're basically doing an ice peak technique, but under vision. An easier way of performing a retromolar intubation is with a combination technique. The first time I performed a retromolar approach, I was giving a lecture about airway management in a province in the Philippines. After the lecture, they asked me if I could help manage an airway of the patient. The patient was a 40-year-old male for excision of a left preauricular mass. The complicating factor was that the patient was in a motor accident a few years back. This resulted to a mouth opening of 1cm and an immovable cervical spine. The patient was admitted three times before in three different hospitals. In all of them, the surgery was deferred due to failure of intubation. Ideally, we could perform an awake nasotracheal intubation with a flexible scope. However, there were no flexible scope available. They have a D-blade and I have my bone fills with me. So, plan A is to perform visual laryngoscopy. Plan V is a combination technique of VL and bone fills. When we inserted the D-blade, it was a Cormac Lehin 4. So, we proceeded to insert the bone fills via the retromolar approach and we were successful to intubate the patient. So, there are some advantages in using the D-blade together with the optical stylet. So, even if you don't see anything with the D-blade, the D-blade could create space by pulling on the tongue. And the nice thing is, it's thin. So, if you have a mouth opening of around half an inch, you could insert the D-blade um, and help the intubation of the optical stylet. Okay, so for example, we've inserted the D-blade and we're at Cormac Lehin 4. Okay. Use the optical stylet. You could still use the retromolar approach. So since if you have a patient with small mouth opening, there is uh, the only space remaining is the retromolar space. And then you could intubate using the technique that we've shown earlier. Okay. The easy part here is the D-blade already um, created more space by pulling on the tongue. Okay. A few tips. Apply generous lubricant on the scope and on the ET tube, especially at the cuff. Movement is restricted because of the small space and lubrication helps. Also, it minimizes the chances of damaging the cup when it passes the teeth. When loss, follow the dark side. Remember, holes are dark, walls are bright. Also, look for landmarks. Landmarks that are easy to see includes the tongue, tonsillar pillars, epiglottis, firiform fossa, and the arytenoids. We take the retromolar route 
because there is small or no space between the incisors. Take note that there are some patients where there is also no retromolar space. However, there are also patients with missing teeth and you could use this space to insert the optical stylet. Happy intubation!